that nice introduction said. I'm Lynette from Natural Machines. In terms of me wanting to sell the future microwave, it's not microwave in terms of functionality, but microwave in terms of the next kitchen breakthrough. We haven't had too many kitchen breakthroughs in the last 30 years. So just briefly, why was I asked to be here today and speak to you on 3D food printing? What's my qualifications? But well, basically, Natural Machines started four years ago, so we've been doing this for quite a number of years, uh, exclusively focused on 3D printing of food with fresh natural ingredients. We've won over 20 awards and recognitions in terms of being a best 3D printer in general, not even just about food, and being an innovation that will change people's lives for the good. So we're gonna walk through some myths of 3D food printing and debunk a few things, and basically, 3D food printing, is it a novelty? Or do we actually need this stuff? Why do a 3D food printer? But before we go anywhere with this, I need everybody to understand what a 3D printer is in the first place. It's a big buzzword, a lot of people know, but a lot of people actually don't know what 3D printing is. So a one minute overview on what is 3D printing? The best way I found to describe it is to imagine a sheet of paper that's in an inkjet printer, something you would print words on a sheet of paper. Now imagine that sheet of paper got stuck in your printer, and it started printing the word hello, and your page got stuck, and it kept printing hello over and over and over again until you got a three-dimensional word, a three-dimensional hello. That's exactly what we're doing. But instead of using ink from an inkjet printer, or plastic or metal in a typical 3D printer, we're actually using food, fresh, real ingredients. This is real food, just 3D print it. Now maybe some of you are thinking, oh yeah, 3D food printing, that's the stuff they're gonna use for space, right? International Space Station, going to Mars and beyond. Yes, that's true. All of those relevant agencies are looking into 3D food printing and how we will feed ourselves off the planet. But I can tell you that 3D food printing is also for this planet today. Others of you may be thinking about when you hear 3D printed food is artificial, it's processed, it's pills. Is this the future of food? We just have powders and pills and we go on with lives? Well, I'm actually based out of Barcelona, Spain, and for any of you who know that area, we love food, real food. We have a lot of fresh food, a lot of great chefs. So our vision is that it's not going to be this. We still want to have fresh food in the future. It's just gonna change how you actually make it and get it. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna eat 3D printed food, it just doesn't sound nice. If you eat anything from a food manufacturer today, if you buy anything from a supermarket, you're practically already eating 3D printed food. Because think about it, what a food manufacturer does is they take food, they push it through machines, they shape it, and they form it. We've taken that exact same concept and shrunk it down to a design kitchen appliance. But the big difference is you can print using your own fresh real food. So our vision of the kitchen of the future is that in about 10 to 15 years, a 3D food printer will become a common kitchen appliance. When you walk into a kitchen, you'll see common kitchen appliances and a 3D food printer, and you won't blink. It'll be a common kitchen appliance that you see all the time. This is in both professional kitchens and home kitchen users. So we're looking at both professional and home kitchen users. But why would those two audiences want a 3D food printer? Well, before we get into that type of detail, one of the other things that may be popping up in your minds is, okay, 3D food printer, that means you have to buy these capsules, like these coffee machines, right? That it's all pre-filled food capsules and I pop it in and just make my food like I make my coffee. Not true. So the way we're doing that is we ship with empty stainless steel food capsules. You put in your own fresh real ingredients. So other people think, okay, fresh ingredients, but I have to blend it, right? It has to be like baby food or purees or maybe I have to add gelling agents. Not true. Because on these stainless steel food capsules, we actually ship with uh, different nozzle sizes. This is only an example of six. There can be many more. So depending on the food texture that you're printing, you don't have to have that blended type of food product. You can do things like couscous with the real vegetables in it, real chunks of vegetables, not blend it. This is just normal couscous shaped. You can do things like mini burgers. These are things we printed with uh, chunks of walnuts and cranberries in it as well. It's real beef. 
We also wanted to make sure we had bread rolls that were the perfect bun burger combination. We couldn't find them, so we printed them. Now, the novelty aspect. Do we really need butter printed in the shape of somebody's head in our future, or even today? No, that's definitely a novelty, right? So this is for a client that requested this specific print. And it was designed so that when they had a dinner party, you would sit down, bread would be on the table, and you would have this on the table. It immediately started conversations between strangers. So mission accomplished on that side. Definitely a novelty in this example. But let's go to those professional kitchen users. Why would they be interested in 3D food printing? Well, there's two main reasons. One, it allows them to do food presentations that just are simply not possible by hand. Try doing this by hand. So chefs are always trying to be creative about food presentations, whether it's something like this honeycomb, or printing on top of other food, or doing something like this spiral. So you can actually do both 2D and 3D prints. So the image on the left is by a Michelin-starred chef. It's called Sea Coral, this dish. It's about one or two layers of the print. The rest of it was completed by hand. That's another fallacy that people tend to think about with 3D food printing. People think, oh, whatever comes out of the machine must be done, that's it, it's my dish. But, you know, when you make dinner sometimes, don't you sometimes grill a steak, steam some vegetables, maybe put something in the oven? You're taking different kitchen appliances and you're assembling your dinner. Same thing with a 3D food printer. So you can do both two-dimensional and three-dimensional prints. The picture on the right is an edible flower pot. That's from a Michelin-starred chef in Italy. He traditionally served this dish in a ceramic flower pot, and you would eat the contents. Now, with a 3D food printer, he can make the entire dish edible. There's other chefs that are using 3D food printing to tie your food to remind you where it came from. So this particular chef uses 3D food printing to remind you that the tuna came from an animal to remind you where it came from, just to respect the food. It's all about respecting the food we're eating. We tend to forget where our food comes from. So it's just a gentle reminder to that. Now you might say, well, okay, that's, that's good. It's food presentation. Is food presentation important? Absolutely. We gauge our food. The minute we start looking at it, we're judging it. You know, will we like it, will we not, based on the presentation. So it does impact us. Now, this is from the same chef as the previous uh, picture that I showed you. Again, it's respecting where your food came from to remind you where it came from. But this leads me to the second reason why chefs are interested in 3D food printing. Automation. Imagine you have a full restaurant tonight, and you have to do that dish for 10, 20, 40, 50 people sitting in your restaurant that evening. If you could do that by hand, that particular design, it would take you a lot of time. Why not automate it with a 3D food printer? So those are the two big reasons why chefs are interested in it. It's about designs that they can't do by hand, food presentations, always trying to be creative with new uh, kitchen appliances, and automation. Getting back to the food presentation, it's not just for adults, it's for kids too. Every presentation I do, you'll find this slide in my uh, presentation because I love it. These dinosaurs are, I have two younger kids. These dinosaurs are from my kid's bedroom. I consider myself to be a healthy eater, so I try to get my kids to eat healthy. Sometimes it doesn't work. So I made a spinach quiche. They wouldn't touch it. When they did, they claimed they didn't like it. So I took the same exact recipe and printed it in the shape of dinosaurs. Same exact recipe, just changed the shape. My dinosaurs became extinct very quickly. I barely got this picture in before my kids ate everything. So presentation is very important for kids as well. And just a little secret on 3D food printing, See how the backs of some of those dinosaurs are quite brown? You know, they resemble that dinosaur on the top center very well, doesn't it? Those two were the dinosaurs I had in the back of the oven. I almost burned them. So you can do some creative things with your oven and 3D printing as well. But what about us, consumers, people that are not chefs? Why would you be interested in 3D food printing? The answer is in the supermarket. So when we go into a supermarket, we have aisles of processed, packaged, and pre-made foods. It's overwhelming. And when you look at the nutrition labels, there's a lot of questions. What are we eating? There's chemical sounding ingredient names, there's E numbers. Even with clean nutrition labels where you can actually understand what you're eating or understand the ingredients, what you don't know is how much of that ingredient you're eating. So we tend to eat way too much salt, oil, and sugar, amongst other things, than we would do otherwise if we made that food ourselves. 
but we're time pressed. We don't have a lot of time to make food ourselves, right? But let's just take the basic example of crackers. You have an entire cracker aisle sometimes. I've yet to find a brand that I'm happy with to uh, serve my kids, to serve myself. They have palm oils, they have sugars, they have salt. You know, they're sitting on a shelf for six months, if not more. But it's very easy to make a cracker recipe, any recipe. It doesn't have to be mine. It can be any recipe you want. And then you 3D print it. Again, it's a 2D example. But what's the benefit to this? Well, if I were to make those crackers without a 3D printer, I would first have to have a clean work surface. Did I mention I have two kids? My kitchen work surfaces aren't clean very often. So I have to make a point to clean the work surface, flour it, roll out the dough, make the crackers. It's a pain point, it's too much time. But with a 3D food printer, I can simply print it. So maybe some of you are sitting in the audience and saying, well, you know, I'm a healthy eater. I don't eat too much processed food. I don't really think I need a 3D food printer in my future. I think I'm a pretty healthy eater too. You know, your definition of health is different for everybody. But this looks pretty healthy, right? This is a typical photo of my lunch. This is the photo of my lunch from one day. Looks pretty healthy. Got some tomatoes, some rice, some beans, and what have you, a whole wheat wrap. But let's take a closer look at that whole wheat wrap, which is the only thing on here that's processed and purchased. There's how many additives? Nine for a wrap. If you were to make a wrap by hand, you're talking about flour, water, salt, maybe some spices, that's it. But it is nine. And when I looked up what they actually were, they fell into three categories. Preservatives, emulsifiers, stabilizers, thickeners, gelling agents, and the mysterious others category. I literally do not know what I'm eating. I look at that E number and it comes up as an others category, that preservative. I don't know what I'm eating. But again, with 3D food printing, I would simply make the dough, so keep it in the refrigerator, take a pinch of it off, and actually print it. No having to worry about work surfaces or working with doughs or anything. It's super fast. No one's going to wait hours for dinner. I can do things like a uh, cracker in less than 20 seconds, a ravioli in under three minutes, personal size pizza in five minutes. No one's going to wait hours for dinner. It must be a fast process. But what about the taste? How does it taste? Well, you probably won't take my word for it, so I'm going to show you a quick one-minute video about what happened when Cameron Cruz came in and took our food to the streets. We put it to the test. Anyone, 3D printed cookies, get them right here. This has come out of a printer, and it's edible? It's been printed out? But how is it done? It's good. It tastes like normal cookie. It's good. It can't be from a printer. It's really good. Some, the idea is perhaps a little too radical. No? No, thanks. No, thank you. It's from a printer? No, I don't trust it. It tastes super delicious. It's really good. It's great. The shapes are imaginative. Tasty. Really tasty. What? That's cool. That's awesome. I edited out the bad parts, right? No. You saw the bad parts were the negative reactions. The only negative reactions are worded 3D printed food is when people were first told it was 3D food printed before they actually tried it. If they weren't told and they just tried the food first, it was great, then they were told. So it's a bit of a mental jump to get people to 3D food printing. But again, once people try our food, once I advance, there we go, then all hesitations about 3D food disappear. They love it because it's made with fresh, real ingredients. So switching gears just a little bit, I don't have too much time left, but it's more than just the 3D printing of food. So our device, Houdini, is actually an Internet of Things kitchen appliance as well. It's connected to the Internet. So of course that means you can have the most updated device software like you would on your phone or your Tesla, for example. You can do the same thing with uh, Foodini. But here's where it starts getting interesting with the data and what have you. Number one, you don't have to be standing over the device which has a touch screen to it to actually pick your dinner or make your dishes. You can do it from the comfort of your sofa. All the software is in the cloud. But with IoT data 
and sensors in the device, you can start doing cool things like maybe you want a dessert tonight that's just 100 calories. The device can actually make recommendations for you on what a print would look like for that and stop the print once it hits that calorie count. Or, you know, in the future, a lot of us have wearables right now. These things are going to get smarter too, just like your kitchen will. So what you can do with that is uh, your data stops living in silos and devices actually start talking to one another. So if my Fitbit knows that I went for a 10K run this morning, which I did not, it's a little bit too cold here for me, but if it knows I went for a 10K run this morning, I can actually do things like print a breakfast bar that's nutritionally correct for me. In the future, you're going to start seeing things where you can break down food elements and rebuild them up with 3D food printers. So it's still proper real food, but you can do things like add vitamin K or add extra iron or really start customizing food for you. We're all individuals. There's not one right diet for everybody. So whether it's a breakfast bar if you go for a morning run, or you can do things like print a pizza. We had to print a pizza because NASA printed one a couple years back. So everybody asked, where's your printed pizza? And you can only imagine that there's one certain country in specific that was a little bit negative about us printing pizzas, right? So they were telling us, why are you printing a pizza? It's very mechanical. Where's the love? When I make pizza by hand, there's love in it. And you know what? Our response to that is, well, if let's say your, your grandmother is making a recipe for you for dinner and she uses a blender to make a sauce, she might use a food processor to help her create her dish. Is that made with any less love? Of course not. She's just using a kitchen appliance. And at the end of the day, if we remember that 3D food printers are kitchen appliances, it's the same concept. So, 3D food printing. I think it's a novelty and need it. You can go in both directions. But at the end of the day, it's a kitchen appliance that helps us eat with fresh, real ingredients because this is real food, 3D printed. Thank you.